Hello friends, welcome back. It is 23 minutes until September 1st, <laughs> which means I have one month and one week to sew everything I need and get everything I need or finish doing that for this cruise that I'm about to go on, this vintage cruise um, with Dandy Wellington. So I am looking through my assignments so far and I think I'm okay maybe uh, I need to make the caftan that we're gonna make in this video maybe and I'll tell you why maybe in just a minute uh, I need to make one maybe two more butterfly blouses that seems doable because they take me about two days total and then I need to make a pair of beach pajamas my room is a mess it is covered in different fabrics that I've gotten from different fabric sales like uh, there's some right there Here's some right here. These these two things are going to become beach pajamas. I'm, I'm still wondering if I really should have gotten white. Or if this bl blue would look better with white than it would with black. But I don't know. We'll see. And I already do have the fabric for the other two butterfly blouses. If I decide to make two. I am a little stressed out because I have less time than I was hoping. I need to get, I think, at least, at least two pairs of shoes still. I don't know. We're going to find out. Um, but let's talk about what we're going to do this week. We're going to try to make the Decades of Style TLC caftan. I have made this before. I've made my Jedi Snuggie and I conveniently have it hanging up to show you. There she is. I think she's going to look amazing in this gold crazy fabric. It's like micro pleated and I think it's going to lend itself to like Hollywood glamour. So this is the one of the evenings that's like a formal night because there are three like full formal like nights although apparently most people on the ship don't go as formal as others but this is what I'm gonna do so I am pretty excited about making this however I have no idea how to sew fabric like this without like because it I, you don't want it to stretch out when it sews but it might and there's all like you got to preserve the crinkle and uh, I was talking to Nicole about this, and she was suggesting, because she has, she's going to have this exact same problem, that um, a very thin line of, like, interfacing go along the edges that are going to get stitched. And I'm like, well, that sounds great, except, like, how do you, you'd have to iron it. And I guess you could just iron that one section flat, like, you know, like, two bumps here worth. I don't know. So, I need to figure that out. I don't know how to operate the, this fabric. So while making this caftan is something I have done before, working with this fabric is something I've never done before. Uh, on the upside, it's going to be real easy to find out if I'm on straight of grain because I'm just going to follow one of these cracks. <laughs> so that's going to be great and easy. Uh, and on the downside, I don't know how to hem this. Like if I roll this over and hem it and then stitch it, is it going to is it gonna make this flat and because like pushing on it kind of makes it flat but you don't want it to be flat you want it to be crinkly so we also have this piece to deal with there's a binding right here on the neck edge and then there's this situation so I think what's gonna happen is I'm gonna use some black taffeta for this piece this piece and the binding so imagine this in that crazy gold with a line of black. I did actually get some hotfix sparkly sparkles <laughs> in case I want to like bejazzle this section. I don't know about the, that but maybe this I'm not sure I got both gold and black so we'll have to see if that seems like a good idea or not and I'll figure that out as I go. However I again this is like an area where there's like a lot of pressing involved to get this to be this way because you gotta like put it on and press it and then you turn this in and press it again <laughs> so I'm like okay I don't I don't know I don't know how that works but okay so yeah my plan for today is to get all of the pieces sorted so that I have enough fabric for that and then see what the scraps are left that I can go to my machine and play with and then go play with them. But yeah, I am excited to figure out how to work with this fabric. I have a million things that I would love to do with fabric like this, but we'll see if it works out. I've watched videos on people making skirts with this fabric, but it they didn't seem to like 
mention any of these issues. <laughs> and I'm just like, okay, maybe, maybe it's not bad. Maybe it'll be fine. So the first thing I'm going to do is clear off my station. Oh, I did want to talk to you guys about the pocket because the pocket on this guy, not great. So this is the pocket. And as you can see, like my hand, not that you stick your hand like this in your pocket, but like my hand barely fits into this. And it's not very deep. Like if I stick my, because you got to take out seam allowance too, right? So it's like even shallower. So like I'm not, I'm not even thinking like a room key is gonna fit and like stay in here. So I'm gonna uh, take this pattern depth and adjust, like make a new pattern. Frank and these two patterns together. So I have this length as I'm supposed to, and like this curve, and then this amount of depth. This is the normal pattern that I use. So that is also in the works for tonight. All right. So I'm gonna clear off my table. I don't even really know how to cut this fabric. <laughs> because you gotta like maintain the crinkle in it in order to and keep it the right size. So I gotta figure that out. I think I'm just gonna like go at it and it is what it is. Luckily it's a caftan so it's like huge <laughs> and I don't I don't think I can mess this up. Like I, I can't make it like too small or too much bigger. Like it's just gonna be what it is. So I think that I have going for me. <laughs> so wish me luck. Here we go. Okay, first encountered problem. <laughs> the stripes do not go the length. They go the width. But I want everything to fall this way, not this way. So I think because at least the skirt pieces are long enough here that I think I have to make this flat and cut them, like fold the fabric the other way. Okay, these are my two widest pieces, and they do both fit, which is great. Uh, they're both on the fold, though, so I'll have to, like, fold it the exact right amount, and then cut and cut off. This is, this is chaos. I'm not going to record this because this is stressing me out. <laughs> I will come back with cutout pieces. Okay, there are four pieces, and that's all I had to cut out was four, well, two pieces of each, so eight pieces, but four pattern pieces. I cut out and that was a moderate nightmare that took me about an hour and a half. <laughs> These are all the pieces that are both interior and exterior to the garment. Um, that are like the belt area. Um, and these need to be like structurally sound so I'm going to use some black taffeta. <sighs> so I have the pocket situation which I need to draft a new one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this part, like this line, and all the way down here and then I'm just going to continue it and catch mm, maybe more like that and then catch this up to here so that I get a deeper and better pocket that still sort of like works with the dress. So I'm going to go sketch this out so I have a pattern piece. Okay, here's the original pocket and here's my new pattern. Obviously bigger. I can put my hand in here. I, it's narrower than I probably would love, but um, my paper was this wide, <laughs> so this is the size of the pocket now. Um, also, like, uh, you know, there's probably a reason that it's is this is this snug. I would I would guess that you don't want too much weight of stuff in there, so whatever. But I'm I'm gonna go with this one for now, and we'll see. Okay, so we have the box taffeta stuff all cut out. It's right there. No there. <laughs> Pockets and all. Uh, I probably do need to cut out the bias binding still, so there is more cutting to do, but I need to measure it and like whatever, so I'll deal with that in a minute. Okay, so now I have a bunch of scraps that I can play with, which is great, and I have, think I have solved at least a couple of my problems, and I have found out some information about other stuff, so I need to, s to do a few more tests and try some other stuff, but the two problems I have solved, maybe. Okay, so along this edge, so these there's a V in the front there, though that's actually the on grain edge, right? So it's the most stable part of, of that piece right there. But they still because because this stuff stretches in both directions, they do want you to put stabilizer on or do something. So I was like, oh god. So I do have this easy knit tape, which I have found. I don't know where I got it. I don't know if I can get more. I'll have to look at that. Um, but I have a bunch, so I think I'll probably be okay, but maybe not because of the hem. But um, I have put it in the same configuration where it's running this way, and I can, without actually ironing it down, 
I can run a piece of this stabilizer along it. So basically I cut this in half and used half of it, which I think is what I would do, just a narrow strip. I'm going to run the bias binding over some part of this. That will also cover most of this, but some of it won't be, and I think that's fine. And But it will stabilize that neck edge so it doesn't stretch out. The second thing I'm concerned about is the hem. And here's why. When you have this and you try to like fold it to hem it, it immediately like squashes the the pleat and spreads out. So the hem would get like flattened and super wide. You can see like it's starting to happen there. And that would just be everywhere and I think that would really annoy me. So one of the things I tried was putting a piece of this stuff here and then and then maybe hem and it does hold it. So I think those are my solutions for that for right now. That might change. We'll see. I'm not going to do a double rolled hem on this. It is going to be a single rolled hem and I don't I don't know if I can actually use the sewing machine. I'm going to go find out if that about that, but if not, I will just hand sew the hem. So we're going to see. Okay, I've learned a bunch of stuff. So here is like a hem and you can see how it like does spread out and flatten that. And here is a hem and it's on the black, but you can hopefully see that it hasn't squished it. And this is a hem that has this tape on the back. So what I have learned is anytime I need to sew across bumps, I basically just have to have this stuff on it to stabilize it. So I also sewed this thing, which is like the equivalent of the shoulder seam. Um, and it's kind of okay. This doesn't have any of that stuff in it, but like right here, it starts to flatten out a little bit. I did figure out how to loosen the like pressure that my foot puts on it, but that doesn't like eliminate the squishing so I think I would feel better if I just used a bunch of this stuff so I'm gonna see if I can find more of it and uh, if so order that okay well I have spent several days <laughs> avoiding having to try and figure out all this bonding web stuff and like if it would work and how to get it on I love that I can bond it without touching the iron to it like I don't have to flatten the thing down this one, actually, I did push down with the iron, and I still, I lost the pleats a little bit, but, like, not enough that anyone but me would notice. I feel like this stuff is a great solution. I'm glad that I just, like, randomly had it. I don't even know where it came from, because this is not something I purchased. I am fairly certain that, like, when my grandma gave me all of her stuff, this was part of that. You know, like, one of those things where you just get, like, a pile of stuff from someone. This, is, this was in one of those piles. The first thing that we need to do is prepare both the fronts and the back piece. And I know that I need to run that tape along this edge and this edge and that edge. And I actually think I should run it along this edge too. Um, it would probably be okay to not, but also I don't really have a good seam finish. Although it doesn't seem to really need seam finishing. It doesn't like shred very easily. So I'm not that worried about it. Maybe I can get away with not putting it on the side seam. Uh, but I definitely need to stabilize this. It's also about the fact that it's stretched. This fabric stretches in both directions. And I kind of want to make it super stable. Uh, yeah, so I think I am gonna go ahead and do that here, and then essentially I'm gonna do that all the way around the back also.
fabric is all prepped for top front and top back. I need to go ahead and run gathering stitches to a certain point here, so I'm go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and mark that. When I have something like this, it's fairly easy because maybe I can draw on this, but if I can't, I will use a pin to mark where that goes. The back does have darts, which I'm like, oh, okay. Well, hope that works out. Um, so I'm gonna mark that stuff, including the point with pins, and then just kind of like wing it. It's a really slight dart, so. E Hopefully it's fine. Um, later when I need to do these matching things, I'll go ahead and mark them with pins also, just so I know what should be where. But I am feeling pretty good about this at this point. Okay, this is my new favorite foot ever. It is like a seam guide ruler foot. I have no idea where I got this, but I think it's probably Amazon. I don't know. If, I, if it is Amazon, I'll link it down below. Uh, but it is amazing i love it it has like this bar that goes down that you can put whatever you know i think my major problem and why like occasionally i'm unhappy with my work is because like sometimes it gets out of control for me and having a wall like this actually helps a lot and then you can click this up and move this out to like whatever the measurement is like this is three the smallest it goes is three eighths so like obviously that's what your foot is so and then you can just like lock it back into place and then it'll be three eighths there so i was doing a three eighths and a five eighths just now for the gathering that i was doing and i was just like oh i really like this i really like this foot this is very helpful okay i got darts in here and here and now i need to crisscross the front and attach the shoulder seam so i'm gonna go ahead and get that done okay we have the first visible seams and the shoulders are in and they look great so I'm glad I did what I did I did what I did um it has you clip a quarter inch off of this and then put the bias strip on but I'm like why do I really need to do that I think it's because they ask you to stay stitch but I didn't stay stitch I did this instead so I don't actually think I need to do that so I'm not gonna <laughs> I'm just going to cut some bias tape and uh, apply that to this. They also tell you to pre-curve your bias, so I have been doing that, and that's pretty easy. You basically just put the iron down on that and steam it, and then sort of curve it, and pull it and curve it until it's curved. It's kind of one of those things that's amazing about bias tape. Okay, I have made 50 inches of bias tape, which I will now apply to the collar of this thing. I will be putting the front side on by machine and uh, then going in my room and watching something and sewing down the back side. So I'll be right back with that. All right, we have bias binding on, sewn down on the back, which I'm into. Now we are creating the waist inset. So this, uh, what is this called? Interfacing has been <laughs> sewn or uh, fused in with heat. And now we are going to make the front and the back have these inserts attached to them in much the same way that that one is there. Okay, back waist set is in. I'm gonna put in the front one next, and that just means I'm lapping the two sides. There's a mark for that, and then doing the same thing. Okay, we have a front. Very excited about that. We are moving on to skirts now. Wow, my hair is just taking on a whole new level of crazy. Okay, what do I have to report to you guys? We're gonna have a mid-session chat. I went to the Ramsey's exhibit at the De Young. Commentary on the Ramsey's exhibit. It was a good length. It was not too much stuff, but it was not too little stuff. What else I would say about it is that there's no Ramsey's in it. <laughs> I don't even know. There is some busts of Ramsey's. There's a couple of like stone statues of Ramsey's in that exhibit, and that's like almost it. Everything else is from other people. <laughs> Um, they talk about Ramses, and I think they're trying to use Ramses as like a tie together because he's like the most famous pharaoh. I looked this up. He is the pharaoh that found Moses. This is that Ramses. <laughs> Ramses two, I guess. But it is not. The, first, they don't mo mention the whole Moses thing at all. But like almost none of it is really about about Ramses. Like all the video things are about Ramses, and like stuff like that but the things that you're gonna see are not from Ramses. <laughs> they're from like 
other people, like artisans that worked on his tomb, or like, I think there was something from one of his daughters, and like, there are things that are like vaguely related to Ramses, but this is like, don't go in there thinking you're gonna see Ramses' as mummy, obviously that's not there. They have found Ramses' as mummy, but Ramses' as mummy is, I believe, in Egypt, uh, so not there at all. <laughs> if you like Egypt stuff, cool. It's a great exhibit. If you're specific to Ramses, you might be slightly let down by it, is what I will say. There is a lot of beautiful gold things. <laughs> it's called the gold of the pharaohs or whatever. Some intricate, like very delicate, uh, wire work, jewelry, lots of statues, a couple of sarcophaguses, sarcophagi, sure. Anyway, there's a few of those, so they're very interesting to look at as like an Egypt situation. It's good. Like, I enjoyed it. I will also say that the De Young has an excellent cafe. Get the lentil soup. It's very good. It's spicy. I liked it. Going to D23 next week. Very excited about that. Staying in this weekend. Who do I want to be a Dragon Con? I'm looking at all the pictures. I'm looking at all the videos. I'm like, oh, Dragon Con. But I'm also looking at like a lot of people packed in. I think I would get like cla claustrophobic, like COVID claustrophobic in there. So maybe I'm glad I'm not going, but and I also have the FOMO. Like all those kinds of people I know are there and I'm just like, oh, I miss Dragon Con. I haven't been in quite a while. My friend who used to live in Atlanta moved away from Atlanta and that has like curtailed my Dragon Con going. I do have a bunch of friends who go, but we're also all like, uh, COVID, blah, blah, blah. I don't know that D23 is going to be any better, but actually I do know that D23 is going to be any better because Dragon Con's like a party more than anything else. It's like a series of parties that they've smashed together into one big party and then in between that series of parties there's also a party going on. <laughs> so, which is what makes Dragon Con amazing, but it also means that like D23 is not really like that. So, I have less less uh concern that i'll be dealing with a bunch of like unmasked drunk people screaming in my face so hopefully though d23 goes well and no one gets sick knock on wood but i am very excited about going to that anyway how are you guys let me know how everyone is how you're doing if you haven't ever commented on my channel before go downstairs go downstairs down below whatever wherever that place is down there and leave a comment and let me know who you are and what your situation is and like what you're into and how you got here and all that stuff. Um, if you're not new here, also let me know what you guys are working on. If you're listening to things, if you're watching things, if you're reading things, all the things I always ask you. What's going on with you guys? You guys know what's going on with me. People have asked me to vlog day 23. I'm gonna attempt to. <laughs> Hopefully that'll work out. <laughs> I'm not sure what's gonna happen. I am gonna see a bunch of people that I know and love. So that's very exciting. I'm also going to Disneyland on Monday. We're gonna go to the LACMA McQueen exhibit on the way home, as well as hopefully the FIDM Academy of Television Arts costume exhibit. So I'm I, the last one I went to was the Academy of Motion Picture Arts. So hopefully I will get to stop by that for just a little bit. Um, the Moon Knight costumes are there and I'm very excited about seeing those. For those of you who are into Bridgerton, the Bridgerton costumes are there. I will hopefully vlog that experience for you. Um, and I will take pictures for those of you who are on Patreon. I will take detail shots as long as I can get in there and as long as they will let me. So yeah, anyway, uh, I'm gonna get back to sewing now, but I just wanted to take a little moment to chat because some of you love the chats. <laughs> Okay, we are now gonna work with the skirt front and back, and we are going to put the webbing at the top and bottom, and run some gathering stitches along the top of both of these pieces, as well as mark where the pockets go in the front piece. The front piece is pockets attached to, like, it's not the front and the back that have the pocket, it's the front and, it's the front piece and the wing piece that have the pocket. Uh, so that comes into play later. Anyway, I'm going to attach the webbing so it's on here, do the gathering threads, and then attach it to that front section, and we will have at least a front and a back going. Okay, so this is a little sneaky peek. The fabric is, like, broken on the back a little bit, which I'm kind of bummed about, but 
there's not really much I can do about it. It's right here. You can kind of see it. You can kind of not see it. It's not that big of a deal. In like extremely bright light, it's more visible, but I think because it's like tucked in, it's kind of okay. I'm not too worried about it. Like this is like, you know, this metallic stuff is just sort of attached to this fabric so you can see where it breaks. That's kind of a better look at it, but it is what it is. Luckily it's on the butt. It's not right in front of me. Anyway, it's looking good. I'm fairly happy with it. Now I have to do kind of a complicated part. Okay, to try and explain this on the existing one, you are looking at one wing, side panel, whatever. So the edge is here, and the other edge is in the same place but on the back. And this right here is on the center fold line. So as you can see, there's no stitching right here. So it essentially becomes a giant bag you're wearing. <laughs> like this whole thing is open on the inside. You can stick your hand inside this area. This whole thing right here is just wide open um, on the inside and it's actually pulled onto your body snugly by a little bit of elastic that is inside of here. So these just kind of drape gloriously. <laughs> anyway, what I'm trying to do right now is this facing right here. It starts out on the inside and gets folded to the outside and then top stitched down and then the top gets seamed into a shoulder seam and then you can stick your hand out through this hole which is lovely okay these are the facings the ones that i showed you on the previous caftan i've marked them so i know where the sew line is and the center is this cut line i've also pre folded and ironed them in the quarter of inch they will need to be once they're turned to the outside uh, because once it's on there I can't really iron it because I'll iron the pleats out. There's only one thing I am confused about which is on the outside of the fabric and I, I understand that it will be covered by the facing once it's put out but they want me to put a piece of fusible interfacing on the outside of the fabric which I get and sounds like a great idea except like that will flatten out the pleats right there, which I, I think is fine, but I don't know how I'm going to get just that area. So normally you'd be able to put your iron like super flat on, onto the, the fabric. I can't do that. So I'm wondering if I can use my little tiny clover iron on that and just put like I have a tiny little shovel shaped flat piece. I could put, use that to adhere it. Questions? Questions I have. Okay, I have webbing top and bottom on this sleeve thing and I have put a pocket on so that's done. Um, I have put this where it goes so it's marked right there and I should be able to see it on the other side. Yep, it's right here. So I have cut, they're staked right there, two little guys and I'm going to use this to try and apply it only in the one spot I need it. <laughs> so, because it needs to go on the outside, because it will eventually be covered by this, which will be pulled to the inside, or to the outside from the inside, after it's stitched down. So, this is, this is chaos. <laughs> uh, but here we go. I feel like frequently I come back and show you what I did after the fact, so I'm like, oh, I'll give them a live view of what happens. Okay, I'm gonna like hold with these scissors. It is working. You can feel it. And it's actually not flattening it out too much, which is great. It does look like it's ironed down. Hey look, that worked. I mean, it made a little bubble, but that's okay. It's gonna be on a sleeve. But yeah, it feels pretty good. All right, that worked. Good. I'm going to keep this guy on hand for the next one. Did I assembly line this so I could do this right away? No, I did not. Rad. Okay, the next step is for me to follow this outside line all the way, stitch it, so that I can slice down the inside line and then pull the whole thing through. So we'll see how that works. A, a long slumber, slender... <laughs> 
this is very silly looking now that I just look at it. Uh, this is stitched on, so all of this yellow is the stitching. It's a little wonky there, but you know what? No one's going to see. It won't matter. Now I'm going to cut this and clip some edges out of this so that I can pull it through and top stitch it. Okay, here it is on the outside, and it's pinned, and now it just needs to be top stitched. Okay, one wing is done. So I need to entirely do this again to make the other wing, <laughs> but it is done. Okay, I have a one wing on, so I thought I would show it to you. Um, the front and the back will be like suctioned to my body more, so I cannot like move my arm out and like make this drag so much. Okay, I'm gonna try to explain the sleeve thing with the second one. Alright, so you turn it inside out. This is the back. You can tell because the front is on the bottom layer here. Here's the sleeve thing, and this is the armhole. So this is the outside edge. So I'm going to slip this thing in between the layers here so that the top seam and the pocket match up and right sides are together. Okay, you can kind of see it. This is the outside of the dress. This is a sleeve. This is the inside of the sleeve with a pocket. And there's the pocket. And I'm going to match them up and pin them, the whole thing together. And then I will have one long seam to do from bottom to top and top around the pocket and back down to the bottom. Okay, I got half of it pinned and after last time trying to do the entire thing in one go, I have decided that I'm going to do it in two goes and I'm going to do one half and then the other half. There's just a lot of fabric, like this whole thing becomes a jumbled mess and it's such slippery fabric that a little bit of control is in order here. And we have a second sleeve. Alright, so this part right here gets an internal structure, which basically suctions it to the back one of these. Why so dark? Why? Why so dark? Uh, <laughs> there's one of these in the back, as you have seen, uh, and it like makes those two things suction together with some elastic in the middle. So I need to insert that stuff, but we're getting close. My friend Hannah is also suggesting to me that I take this binding that's here, essentially, and do it around the hem, which I'm into. Alright, we have facings and instructions, and we only have one more and a half pages to go. <laughs> uh, so I gotta turn under all the edges so that makes sense, and then we're gonna tuck this guy down and stick uh, a piece of elastic in there. And we're gonna tack it to the inside of where that stripe is and then you basically top stitch it down from the front so that the top stitching looks nice on the front and that's how that stays there and then you sew the elastics together you can use twill tape and tie it if you want to but this pattern by the way is amazing it is once again the decades of style TLC caftan and I love this pattern. Uh, I gotta warn you, this is medium grade linen. This thing is heavy AF. <laughs> like this is not a summer caftan. I cannot wear it right now. It's 100 degrees outside right now. We're in this giant heat dome. Uh, I can't wear this even though it's linen. It's just too much fabric. It's too warm. The short one, for sure, I would make and wear and I want to make and wear that linen style. This is a fall spring situation in California. If you live in a cooler climate, maybe this is a summer thing, but this is nice and cozy and warm. Like, I wear this, I, honestly, I wear this in the winter <laughs> because it's a lot of fabric, even though it's linen, but it's great. I love this pattern. It's not complicated. It's easy to understand. It's great. <sighs> okay, this situation right here is kind of a mess. It gets a little bit better once you iron it, but not really. Uh, this is a cautionary tale. The cautionary tale is to read your actual instructions, which were to baste this in place, which I should have done, but I didn't actually even see that instruction. So I pinned it in place, and essentially you pin this thing, like, over the inside, so you, you make this thing, which I'm making another one right now to show you, don't worry. Um, you make this thing, and then you just sort of, like, place it here. And if I were to do it on the other side, I would be placing it here because this is where the like belt belt section is. So you make that and you just place it here. And like I was dumb and I just pinned it. But the instructions 
her instructions said to baste it, which would have been a much better plan. <laughs> so this time I'm going to baste it, <laughs> and then you top stitch it from the other side. So imagine this thing is pinned with all of this ruffle. Like, this is just so much stuff, right? And, and I am very hesitant to, like, clip this down very much. Uh, because I don't think that's going to help and I think it's going to give it more opportunities to be a chaotic mess later. And then you edge stitch from the front belt. Not a great, not a great situation with this level of chaos going on, right? Because I've got this like a weird like stabilizer stuff on, this fabric is hard to deal with. There's so much stuff under the needle, it's crazy. So <laughs> I'm going to listen to her this time because I reread the instructions. I'm like, why was that so hard? It's like basted. I'm like, duh, duh, baste it. Okay, so I'm making the thing. And you do that by first folding all the edges over and ironing them down so that you have, you know, a nicely tucked thing. All right, so we got this all down, which is great. Already cut two pieces of elastic. And now what I'm going to do is slide this elastic under the point here and then I'm going to sew across this area and I'm going to fold this back over and I'm going to sew a little like house or whatever around so that the elastic is like bound together. I'll come back and show you that. Okay this is what I mean by you know I follow it around. These aren't the best but they are what they are and it doesn't really matter because it's on the inside of the garment. Then you lay this on here uh, I'm going to pin it down, <laughs> so, and I'm going to follow kind of my previous stitch lines because you can see where they are, just to make sure they're covered because that, I'm going to stitch right next to that. <laughs> uh, and then I'm going to base this on, and then I'm going to top stitch from the top. Okay, we have it pinned. Okay, we're all basted down, and yes, this seems much better. <laughs> now I'm going to go to the front side and top stitch this whole thing down, being very careful not to catch anything along the way. Okay, now I'm going to reduce remove those basting stitches. It is much better. It still looks crinkly because I haven't gotten to iron any of it. And I don't know if I'll get to iron any of it because then I might iron something on here. This is like the center front of the dress so I might just be like this is fine. Uh, anyway, it's all encased is what matters and I need to do the sewing together of the sides still but I wanted to take out this basting. Okay, so here we go. Still trying to figure out if I'm going to do the bottom or not in a in a binding so I have to put a sample binding on but everything's on it's being like pulled inward to my body uh, but this is what it looks like I feel like Queen Midas in this thing so this thing is now called the Queen Midas dress so the back looks fairly much like the front into it I like it okay this part right here has bias binding on it this part right here has like a hem like basted in and this part doesn't have any so I was like checking how it would hang and stuff. Uh, obviously I cannot do this. I think it's cute but no, it's not happening. Okay, I have consulted all my consultants. We're just gonna leave this hem without hemming it. That's what's gonna happen. The drape would be better, everything about it would be better. I actually ripped out the webbing uh, because occasionally you catch a flash of it because it's like it's a hem. So I ordered more webbing that is black from the only source where you can get that webbing, which is Walmart. I'm not excited about that purchase, but like I ordered two so that I have some in stock. Some people are like, yeah, put the black webbing on. Some people are like, eh, whatever, doesn't really matter. Um, so I'm not going to worry about it too much until later. It might be a thing that I like do on the fly later. Also a thing I might do on the fly later is to bedazzle this belt area with some black sparkly things. Uh, I have one of those heat tool things that like lets you put sparkly on it. I'm also threatening to put just like clear or gold crystals everywhere on this dress. <laughs> But I don't know if I have time to do that. So that is a stretch goal. That will happen if all my other goals are complete and if I'm dressed for every day. <laughs> so I have other things I also need to make. So I'm going to go ahead and make those. And then if I have time, I will be jazzle. That is my goal. So I am going to hang this up right now. Tomorrow I'm going to take some pictures and then end this video and give it, get it out for you. 
highly recommend this TLC caftan pattern. If you're hot right now, make it in the short version out of linen. If you're cold right now, make it out of wool, make it out of snuggy fabric, make it out of fleece, make the long one. Like, that guy is warm. <laughs> and it's linen. Uh, this guy is warm also. Like, it's poly, so <laughs> it's gonna be warm, but I'm just like, whew, I'm in an air conditioned house and I'm warm. So, it's a good thing that the cruise is gonna be cold. I'm excited about that happening because I haven't been cold in so long that I'm like, what does that feel like? What is it like to be cold? I would love to be cold. I might not bring a jacket. I might just be like, no, I'm going to go outside and just be cold. No, that's not true. I'm going to wear a jacket. I just don't have one yet. Uh, that's not true. I have a fur coat. <laughs> My fur coat is really short and I don't think it's really appropriate for this trip. Because it's like, first of all, it's not really my, it is my fur coat. I own it now. <laughs> my friend gave it to me. Actually, she gave me a completely different fur coat, which I liked a lot. But it was really heavy, like just densely heavy. So I gave that to Gigi <laughs> because she now lives in the Pacific Northwest where it is cold all the time. And she just starts out cold. And I'm like, girl, you're going to get way more use for, out of this than I am. So I just gave it to her. My friend who gave me that coat then gave me this other coat. But it's like really short. It's like at your waist and I don't think that's appropriate for the time period so I thought I had a peacoat that would be cute like not a peacoat pea like not like a navel peacoat but that cut I don't have one because <laughs> I live in California why would I have that uh I have like snow coats for like going to the snow <laughs> so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do about the coat situation but I'm gonna ponder that so I will get back to you on that I am going to make some butterfly blouses I think I have two more on the docket maybe I also have a missing pile of silk somewhere. I went to this place called Thai Silks and I bought a bunch of silk and I can't find it. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, I've come to the point where I've, like, I can lose silk. That says a lot about me as a person. <laughs> okay, so I have to go like try to figure out where that is because I would like to make the shirts that I intended to make out of that silk. I'm um, also maybe gonna go to Thai Silks on Tuesday with Erica, I'm not sure, but I might be. So hopefully I do not come home with any more butterfly fabric. <laughs> I wanna get some rayon chalet, like that first one I made. Oh, that fabric is amazing and it's so cool and comforting and whatever. I just wanna get a bunch of that and like dye it. <laughs> so if I make more butterfly blouses ever, they'll be out of that. It was a, like a dream to work with. Anyway, uh, I have a couple more of those to do and I have a pair of beach pajamas, I might do the beach pajamas for you guys next uh depending on how things go i am leaving on wednesday this sunday i am leaving on wednesday for d23 hopefully these beach pajamas are awesome and they get made quickly and then i have more time to be jazzle these caftans anyway i am just running off at the mouth at this point so i hope you guys are having a great week so far let me know what you're into what you're watching what you're up to what you're listening to all that kind of jazz. I'm gonna go downstairs right now and watch episode three of House of the Dragon. I'm watching both House of the Dragon and Rings of Power. It's a lot. <laughs> I'm also watching What We Do in the Shadows and like all the other new shows that are out. Apparently I'm just watching all of them. I'm very excited about what they're gonna announce at D23. That's gonna be exciting. I did not get into any of the panels like that are about that. I did get into the legend ceremony. Which is interesting because I'm like, who are they going to have be a Disney legend? Sometimes that ceremony is really cool. I also got into a Tron panel and some giveaway. But I wanted to go to the Marvel panel and I really wanted to go to the Parks panel. Neither one of those worked out. So it is what it is. Uh, we might try standby for that. Anyway, thank you for coming along on my caftan journey. I hope everything is well with you and I will see you guys next time. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Hit the bell if you want to be notified. If you don't, that's fine. I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys!